The research now shows overwhelmingly that companies that employ more women make more money. It's as simple as that. We call it pink profits in the book. And there are now more than half a dozen of these global surveys that show that the companies that have opened the doors to female talent are doing better by every measure of profitability than their competitors. A couple of weeks ago, I got a phone call from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and they asked me if I would come in and interview Christine Lagarde, the first female head of the IMF. Now, usually, if I want to interview Christine Lagarde about global economic policy, I put in a request, it's kind of a lobbying process, sometimes I get her and sometimes I don't. But this time around, the IMF wanted me to come in. And they were asking me to come in because they had just come out with their first global study on the power of women in terms of purely economic numbers around the world. And what they found was this, that if women had access to the workforce in the same numbers of men as men in the United States, we would see a GDP growth of 5%. In Japan, that number would be 9%. In Egypt, that number would be 34%. What Lagarde's message to me was, was that no economy can afford to ignore the power of women. It's not that we want, as she puts it, Lehman sisters. We want Lehman brothers and sisters. And maybe if we'd had Lehman brothers and sisters, we might not have jumped off that cliff quite as readily as we did back in 2008. Because women manage differently. We bring something else to the table just by very virtue of who we are. Every single one of you in this room, just by virtue of being a woman, brings a valuable commodity to the meetings and the decisions that you're attending. We are more consensual. We're more collaborative. We're better mentors. We take longer-term decisions, and this was particularly relevant in the financial services industry. We are making decisions six months, six years down the road, not six hours, six days, or six weeks down the road. They did a survey on the London, floor of the London Stock Exchange that showed on the days that male traders made riskier decisions and riskier trades, they had higher levels of testosterone in their bodies. There's a direct correlation between high levels of testosterone and sometimes excessive risk. And we saw where that got us a few years ago, just before the financial crash. Now, if you look at funds, investment funds that are managed by men, the male funds tend to spike very high, but they also plummet very low. Female funds run at a much more consistent level. They don't have the spikes, but they don't have the troughs either. And that's what's leading people to decide and come to the conclusion that what we want is both of those capacities in a decision-making room. There's a great guy at the University of Michigan, an academic called Professor Larry Page. He's come up with an algorithm for this. He calls it the diversity theorem. He says that if you put a group of super smart men in a room and a group of men and women in a room, in a room the men and the women, the diverse group, will always come up with a better business decision than the super smart men. There is something about the diversity of opinion, the diversity of perspective, that we, just because of who we are, bring to the table that makes us valuable in the workforce. And if there is nothing else you remember from what I tell you this morning, it is these two words, pink profits. You are valuable. Your companies need you. The economy needs you. We cannot afford to keep losing women in the way that we're losing them.